Ari, and I'm happy to have this opportunity to share my journey with you in terms of losses that I've experienced and managing my grief. So I'll give you a little bit of background on myself and my story. I guess you could say it starts off that after I graduated from college, I moved to Manhattan and my parents had lived in New York, but they moved almost immediately to Florida. So since my young 20s, I probably only saw my parents a handful of times a year, but I spoke with them almost every day and was extremely close with my parents. My mom was definitely someone I considered my very best friend. And I used to think to myself that she was all I ever needed. And as long as I had her, that I would be okay. And then flash forward into my early 30s, I was 31 when my dad was diagnosed with bladder cancer. And initially his prognosis was pretty promising. And a few months after he was diagnosed with cancer, my mom was actually diagnosed with glioblastoma, brain cancer, which if anyone's familiar with that, it's one of the most aggressive forms of brain cancer and it's considered a terminal diagnosis. So I was quickly thrown into having two parents who were sick at the exact same time. And soon after my dad's diagnosis, um, that initially seemed promising. Um, his surgeries were left with just reoccurrences. So his diagnosis also became terminal. Um, so I was living in Manhattan with two parents with terminal illnesses who were living in Florida. Um, and it was extremely, extremely challenging. Um, and at some point during this time, I actually moved to the suburbs for the first time. Um, so I had that transition as well. And essentially, I had to deal with so much between the two of them. Um, I had ICU an ICU stay with my father, um, various hospital stays between both of them. Eventually, my mom um, needed to live in an assisted living facility when my home became too unsafe for her. Um, I had handicapped, I had tried to make my home handicap accessible for her, but at some point it was just not feasible to have her continue living with me. So we had brought my mom up um, from Florida to live with me in New Jersey for me to be her caregiver. Um, but I also relied on lots of aides to help me. It's not a job someone can take on themselves and also maintain a job themselves. Um, and it was just a complete crisis, to be honest, um, because neither of my parents could take care of themselves and they certainly couldn't help in taking care of each other. And in addition to them, um, my sister and I were also left responsible caring for our elderly grandmother who was in her 90s. And she actually um, eventually passed away in between my parents. So. My dad um, didn't even live a year from his diagnosis, and my mom lived slightly over a year from hers. And I think what's particularly um, of note about my story is about what glioblastoma is as a disease. So bladder cancer, I think many people would recognize and could relate to in terms of a cancer that just kind of eats away at someone's physical body. Um, there's obviously a lot of pain associated with that sort of diagnosis, but with glioblastoma, in addition to physical deterioration, it's also a disease that destroys the mind. So my mom lost her short term memory. So for instance, if she just ate dinner, she couldn't remember that she just ate dinner. She lost her ability to operate the most basic things that someone operates every day, such as a smartphone or a microwave, or even, you know, knowing how a light switch operates, um, or even knowing how to place a laptop on your lap. So managing the severity of her illness was extremely traumatic. Um, and I like to analogize it with 
Alzheimer's disease um, moving at the speed of lightning. That's kind of how it felt on a day to day basis. And between the two of them, anytime I felt like, you know, there was a calm moment or we were making progress in managing their care, um, it felt like a wave would just crash down on me again and again and again and again. And, you know, because I had just moved to the suburbs in the midst of all of this, I was really alone. I didn't have a community built yet in my town. I didn't really know anybody, um, just a handful of people here and there. Um, so it was extremely isolating. And another part of my story is that I had tried to get pregnant in order for my parents to be able to meet my child. Um, I knew they were both dying. And at the time I thought that would be meaningful if they could meet a child of mine. And I did not succeed in that endeavor. Um, I ended up getting pregnant the month after my dad passed away. And then my mom passed away the month before my daughter was born. So it's extremely challenging being a mom without having any parent um, to, to guide me and to kind of reach out to for support and just someone to talk to. That's really all I want to do is pick up the phone and, you know, call one of my parents. And my parents died within nine months of each other. So just every single day kind of felt like a crisis. And I had heard of Imagine um, just from like my local town social media and, you know, knew of it as a resource primarily for children. But I reached out in hopes that maybe there was something they could offer me as well. And I was lucky enough that they provided young adult support groups. And so I was able to join a young adult support group that met every other week. Um, and I joined soon after my dad died. And I think it was actually particularly useful for me because even though I was there because my dad had just passed, in many ways, it was something that helped me get through my mom's illness um, because she was actively dying. And I was able to attend my support group. And a lot of the times I, I talked about my mom and what I was going through with her. And I also have a, a personal grief therapist who always says that grief starts at the, at the time someone's diagnosed with an illness. So grief doesn't just start after someone passes away. I started experiencing grief as soon as my parents were sick. And as soon as I knew they had terminal illnesses and that there was only so much I could do to try to extend their lives and bring them quality to their lives. Uh, another way I actually took advantage of Imagine is by joining a caregiver support group. So in addition to grief groups, they have caregiver support groups, which kind of is a testament to, to what I mean that grief starts at diagnosis. So attending some of those sessions was also helpful to kind of know that other people were caregivers and to hear about what they were experiencing. Eventually, I found that being part of both groups was a bit overwhelming for me. Um, so ultimately, I just settled in in my grief group because I really wanted to to use my spare time just to actually be with my mom um, and spend as much time with her as I could. And another way that Imagine has helped me is just through flexibility. So because I was a mom with a young daughter and also a working mom, I wasn't able to attend every session with Imagine. Um, in person. So I was actually able to join some of my sessions virtually even before the pandemic hit, which was a huge help because I could kind of keep imagine in my life um, and fit it into my busy schedule and not have to abandon it just because maybe I couldn't get there on time and I would have missed too much time of the session to make getting there worth it. And I, I think since the pandemic hit, Imagine has been incredible at stepping up and figuring out how to keep our sessions going 
and, you know, keeping us connected to each other. And it's just been a great resource to know that's always there. And I think what's important for me about having Imagine is that in some ways I feel very um, different than my peers. A lot of my peers can't comprehend what it's like to lose a parent, nonetheless to lose two parents um, in their early 30s. So Imagine is a, a safe place for me to be understood and to share my feelings in an environment that feels safe and where I know people just get it. I think that's what a lot of um, my friends in Imagine would say, like people in our group, you just get it because you've been there. You know how certain comments make each other feel and how certain experiences make each other feel. And, you know, flash forward to today, I, in addition to my daughter, I now have a newborn son. He's actually three weeks old. And I think that, you know, being a mom and moving forward in my life as a mom is how I try to be resilient. I, I don't want to be a hermit. Um, I want to live my life to the best that I can. And I absolutely love being a mom, but it's also filled with sadness. And, uh, you know, sometimes when I'm feeling emotional, I'll just look at my daughter and she says to me, you know, she actually calls me Ima, which is Hebrew for mom. She says, Ima sad? And I say, yes, Ima sad. She, she picks up on it. Um, so my, my grief is often intertwined with my love for my children. It's kind of one and the same. And, you know, both of my children are named after my parents, which is, you know, one way that I can honor their memory. And I, I just am very grateful um, for the mental health resources I have available to me, including Imagine. And I really encourage, you know, anyone to seek out health, not to suffer alone. There's no shame. In talking about grief, there's no shame in getting help for your grief. And um, I really encourage people to take advantage of their local communities um, to feel a part of something bigger. And I just want to thank um, this organization for the opportunity to share my story. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.